Floss Tube. Welcome to my Flossmas. I am Crafty Emily and it is the 7th of December. We are a week in already. <sighs> Still no Christmas. These are the only Christmas decorations up in my house. I really must do that very, very soon. I'm starting to get asked little questions about Mum, are you putting Steve up? Yeah, Steve's still in the loft, but we did do a bit of tidying up today. Um, I went and looked around the auction house today because there's an auction finishing tomorrow. So because it can, they can't do live auctions at the moment, we're currently working a bit like eBay. You put in your best offer on a box. So I've bid on a couple of bits and pieces. So we'll see. We will see. Um, what have I done since yesterday? Not very much. Um, so I have done block number seven. So this one has got a very pretty dangly bow with a heart and I put another little dangly heart next to it and these are on the pattern. You can see them dangling just there and on my pattern as I did to my parents that bow, that second bow there was covering where my scissors pierced a hole in the fabric. Oops. I'd already stitched because I stitched the tree first I stitched all of the, I started at the bottom of the tree and I stitched the entire tree so yeah he's that tree trunk that's full coverage bear in mind that this this whole pattern stitch count is big it is 315 by 215 so he is big tree so all of that tree trunk and all of the branches are completely stitched in. Beautiful pattern, absolutely amazing pattern, but hard work. So block number seven is done and I have done quite a bit more of my Nutcracker Santa. That's all the red and this creamy colour up there. And I've done his cuffs and I've just started doing the side of the Noah's Ark that he's he's holding so I've done that bit I need to fish out some other colours I need some skin I need some beard and I need some browns the browns are simply going to get used from the box where I'm doing everything else from so I've done a little tiny bit more on the kingdom of books literally put in three three strands I did this colour here up the side and counted up the side here and there's a little bit of something on top there so I may mean to come down the other side today finish off all this colour around here because this is blue and I want to get to this blue bit so I thought I'd fill in a bit, a bit of the background and then and then start filling in the colours but with the two strands on the 18 count you can see the coverage it is luxuriously thick um, Still not got my thread drops done. He is up in the shed making noise. He's gone to tidy up the shed. And within, the shed's about 50 feet, about 20 metres from the house. It's a big, big shed, double glazed windows. It's got the old original house's back door, so it's, it's good and sturdy. I can hear machines, I oh, have printing ink on my hand sorry um, that that's not coming off tonight if I go and do some washing up that might start to wear off without sorry is on my hand today anyway um, yeah no thread drops yet and let me take the pattern off that and for peaceful street I've done quite a bit more on that one this this for all its three strands on 14 count I'm really enjoying it. I'm loving how the colour is hitting you in the face. Its colour is dramatic. It's like, I am here. Here is the colour. And I'm really enjoying it. It's quite good fun. See how? See what I mean about the, the colour change? Looks like it's been shaded with a coloured pencil rather than the very high definition pixels that you get on a, on a Hade. And I'm really, I'm really liking it, actually. Really liking it. That's my stitching. Now, I know I'm 
elbow deep in two new starts and Christmas stitching, but I've got the long dog hanker. Anybody who stitches long dogs in the monochrome, they get that hankery feeling. Mm, I need to probably pick back up Anzac actually, that's the nearest, and do a little bit of um little bit of work on that one. Um, so yesterday, because I knew yesterday's video was going to be short because I had no content yesterday, um, I thought I'd show you again, <laughs> but I don't know if I have, <laughs> I don't know if I have new subscribers or whether you're just my wonderful people, but this one's worth a show every now and again. Now I'm looking at two sheets of mount board, so really it's time to put this and this on mount board. Here is my finish of, I call it Sansui, but I've heard it more often than not called Sansuzi there. Now, absolutely beautiful, full of rookie mistakes. Now, there's the debate. Do you see this ugh, motif here? It's a heart and birds and a plant pot and leaves. Now watch it. About there, it turns into a tribal face, a sugar skull, a tiger. Suddenly it's got ears, it's got teeth and it's got eyes. I kind of saw that by mistake. I think Jules, the long dog designer, puts these in for us <laughs> because it's one of those things that when you're stitching it you see birds you see hearts you see a planter and then when it's up on the wall you go because <gasps> I only saw it holding it up did I see it this is fantastic one it's a fantastic pattern it's full of marvelous little things I adore this chicken pecking at the ant because that's just what chickens look like when they're going after something. When they're in your garden and they're scrubbling around and they're going at something. That is just what a chicken looks like when it's found something tasty. Like one of those really huge worms or something. That's just what they look like. It is full of marvellous long dog goodness. It's a bit page six pandemic-y here with this very heavy border. Now, there are only two stitches mistakes in this not a stitch that carries everywhere there are two single stitches out I counted out every single stitch on this and it was brilliant and how I did this always check your fabric guys always check your fabric there's one stitch left at the bottom which I'm good with but I was coming down here so I started in this corner because that's where I start and I knew it was going to be tight so I started quite close to the top but I didn't when I measured I didn't take into account the fact that this bit here I sort of started I sort of measured from the bottom of that down two centimeters yeah it should have been one because of this bit at the top anyway I've got a little bit down the side so I did this on a 28 count, um, printed, it's white on the back, it's beige on the front, and it's called Manuscript. Can you see? It's got squiggly lines. It's actually a print of, of writing, which is really subtle and really nice. This is, again, a Lakeside Needlecraft fabric because it's Laguna and it's soft and it's beautiful and it's, it's so easy to stitch on. And I knocked this out very very quickly and I used a kit I used I've got the old Ada it doesn't matter I bought a kit off Amazon when I first started watching floss tubes I bought a kit off Amazon and thought it was really pretty it was one of those four seasons four pa sorry about my hand four seasons four panels um four bits of a tree that yeah you see them on Amazon I think they're probably rip off rubbishy charts anyway when it arrived one it was on 12 possibly count Ada which for even me you know two years ago when I was just getting back into stitching was huge and it was printed 
no no I'm not a printed kit person I knew within 12 stitches one that I didn't want to do it two that I wasn't enjoying it and three that I am a counted cross stitch person so I had I had the thread drop actually very like very like this but not not as nice not as nice as this but very like that and they were all laid out they weren't laid out like these which are essentially laid out correctly how I would lay out colors you know in a in a loose graduated rainbow that's how to lay out colors these were just any old how so I pulled them all off and I rolled them into spools around my hand and then I just laid them out in a rainbow and I had a piece of fabric which I bought to put something else on that didn't work it, it was a pale pink rose it's another kit which I haven't stitched yet that I got from my bobbin um, it's really nice it's a rose I was going to do it for my mum but I didn't want to do it on the white Ada it came with so I thought I'll get myself a nice piece of creamy beige but the pinks just washed out. I started it and the pinks washed out. So I frogged that out and I had this piece of fabric. So I picked a long dog that would fit on the fabric. I didn't fit it very well onto the fabric, but it did fit. So my dogs are out, by the way, which is the bad barking you can hear. They're very loud. Clay, the big, the big bark is Clay. He's a Hungarian Fizzler. They're both nearly 10. And the, light, the, the higher pitched bark is Jock. He is an, uh, an English show type Cocker Spaniel, which means he's fat and lazy and his hair grows all the time. He doesn't shed hair. It just grows to the floor because they're supposed to have this lovely flowy skirt of hair from... They're supposed to be hand stripped down to their haunches and then this flowy skirt of hair. I clip him with horse clippers and he gets clipped maybe five times a year. And when I clip him, he's bald, properly naked bald. Like we call him a little pink pig because he's white with a few black spots. We call him little pink pig because he is bald when I do it. But because otherwise... He's very high maintenance and our dogs just kind of just mope, mope about the house, you know, they're not. I haven't time to be brushing a dog so he gets shaved. By the by, that's what the barking is. They're my dogs. And they're loud. Clay's got a really big boy bark, but he is the daftest dog. He's a sweetheart, but he's big, really big. That's by the by. So, here's my sans, I call it Sansui, and all I did was I got the chart and I drew on it. I drew, I got, I printed out the cover sheet and I drew lines and then I mapped out where all the colours were going and then I actually printed out the chart and I jigsawed it together with bits of tape and double-sided sticky tape and made a single large sheet and I got my quilting ruler and I drew lines corner to corner, across the middle marks and then I divided each one up again. And then that's what and then I stitched each section. I started here and I went that way. And I came down here and I got into this green and I thought I still have all of this green to stitch to get to the corner. And I thought that's Flora letting the dogs in. They're in. Hmm trouble with dogs she just put their tea down for them it's quite late for their tea which is why they're making so much noise never mind about that um Flora's the animal girl so yeah and I then I then took the green right down and had several small heart attacks as I got to the bottom and then realized that as I stitched across that twice there's a long point there's one of them there's a long point and there's and there's the other where there's only one stitch <laughs> oops so I am going to I've got um, natural coloured cotton twill tape which I will stitch around the edge to hide the fact that there's no margin and then I will mount it on mount board and then once we've got it mounted on mount board Robin can make me a frame want that done sooner rather than later 
and this is what I spent the first month of lockdown stitching. 16 days this took me. Bear in mind I've been working nine to five for a year and a half, nearly two years when we went into lockdown. I've been working nine to five the whole time. So when I went into, we went on furlough and went into lockdown in the UK um, back end of March, I was used to I was used to being at work all day. So I sat right here on my bed and I stitched basically nine till five and then some in the evenings. And it took me 16 days to knock out quilts. This is quilts. I'll write its name along here because it's spelt with a Z. It is Long Dog Sampler. Same, same PDF download. And I used stash colours because I just wanted to get going on it. This piece of 28 count Laguna I bought to stitch a Celtic lady on, but I'm yet to stitch a Celtic lady. I wasn't quite ready at this point. Now I feel I'm ready. I've got so many other projects. I'm not going to do one yet. So there's quilts. So mine's a little brighter than it's meant to be because I pulled from stash. But it is the most beautiful pattern. And there's the quilts at the bottom and the cats. And the best bit of this is that little dog always having a pee against the cart. That's as charted. Gotta love Jules. She is amazing. I just love it. It's, it's just it's just brilliant and I enjoyed I enjoyed every stitch of that apart from getting round to doing the back stitch which took me about a, a forever to get round to but it's done now so I thought I'd show you those two old finishes um, I don't have a lot of finishes because as you know most of my projects are enormous I will show you a couple of whips next time I'm a, I'm a bit of a loose end I have shown them all before but um, it was very bad lighting because I was down in the living room and the camera was blurred because it had a smudge on the inside. Robin has since stripped the camera down and cleaned it up, but I use my phone now because it's so much easier to transfer it to the editing program and put it onto YouTube than it is to record it on a camcorder and then plug it into a, a laptop or an old computer. My old computer is basically clockwork. It's older than my son, my old computer, and it... <laughs> It gets there, but it takes its time. So, yeah, it's easier to just do it on my phone. <laughs> um, so I've shown you all my bits. I've done all of that. These are starting to get quick because I'm not getting much time. So today was good. Um, I worked this morning. I'm teaching a new girl how to do my job because I'm, I'm going part time because, you know, I have two jobs and my original job that I got the redundancy notice from is staying open. They've decided to just stay open. And we were all just meant to just go, cool, brilliant. Forget about any other plans we've made. And I went, no, I can't. I've made a commitment to somewhere else to work three days. They're much longer shifts. It's much longer hours. And I need, because, because I've been on furlough so long, I need to make up some of the money I've lost earlier in the year, basically. So I said to my original boss, I need to go part time. I'm not going to leave. She was like, she was really stressed that I was going to leave because by weird, I don't know. I'm the only, I'm the only person in there who knows how to sort out the paint that the painters go and on hand painted glass work, you need to have paint. And there was only me. So she was getting a bit worried that I was just going to go, but I was never just going to go. I want to do part time there part-time there actually end up working more hours substantially end up working nearly 10 hours a week more than I was originally which will help bring me back to where I was pre-covid so I suggested we take on one of our home painters who's local and very good she's very good she's, I think she's kind of like me she does other kinds of crafts but she's got the same kind of I think she's got the same kind of thought process as I have with 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 sorting the colours because it's all done by eye. It's all done by mixing and viscosity and and by eye because it's putting down paint on glass. So it has to be the right consistency so that it dries the right colour. If it's too runny, it dries too pale. If it's too thick, it leaves marks. It leaves streaks like painting with it's like painting with nail varnish that dries clear. 
it's really it's really peculiar I would like to do put up some clips of me painting but I'm not quite sure what my boss would think of that so I'm not going to anytime soon I don't think but it's really it's really fun I really enjoy it and I enjoy it I'm sitting on my butt I'm not doing anything too difficult I only get a bit messy emptying the bin because the bin's covered in printing ink that's how I, I that was as I was leaving so I didn't get the the strong swore figure on it to get it off so it will just come off so do some washing up later anyway um talking drivel um so today is grab a box day so i shall rummage in my rummage bag and choose choose the handmade bits and pieces for today's box the lady who won the box um yesterday has contacted me I hope you're all right. She messaged me and said she'd been in hospital overnight. And I was like, oh, no, I hope she's all, hope you're all right. Um, and your box will be in the post tomorrow and you should get it. Mm, you should get it on Wednesday because you're in the UK. So it should get right there. So here's. Oh, this is a lovely one. Here, do I, I say that for all of them, don't I? So here's the needle minder going in the next box, which will be pulled out on the 8th. So anyone who comments today or comments, commented yesterday or comments today will be put in the dip for this box. This is a 5D, so it's pre-decimalisation. So this stamp will be from the probably 1960s or 1970 or 1971. It wasn't 1972 because I know the I know the stamps there. They're the, they're the angels. Um, so it's Shepherds. Some lovely brightly coloured shepherds with a beautiful sheep looking up at a star. Love that one. So we'll put that one in and I'm going to put in these two pins. I've got a chocolate donut and a pink iced biscuit with a little star on it as the, as the counting pins. The idea is that I make these into counting pins and sell them. Yes. I just haven't quite got round to it. These, these, yeah, these are the first ones I've actually put on the pins and I'm really very pleased with how they came out. So I will steam ahead at some point and mount all the rest and then they will be put, they will be going in the Etsy shop. I'm thinking three, three pins. I don't want to sell them singly because that's just so much postage. So I'm thinking three pins maybe as a little, as a little group and they'll all be themed together. She has done some little animals and things as well, which are pretty epic. They're really brilliant. What else do I need? A little person. Let's find a little person in my box of tricks. We are picking out this little guy. He is white with a red, ha red hat hood. It's a hood. And let me take him out of his little baggie. I just had baggies the right size, so I popped them in. There he is. And he's got a green a green sequin and bead and again you can easily see there the jump ring and the little lobster claw which you can put on whatever you want whatever you want basically so i'll put these aside here so if you want to win a little box with these gubbins in please comment on this video and everyone who commented on yesterday's video and I will do a, I've had a few comments from some of the older videos as well so I will do a sweep through so can I just start from the oldest comment and number them from there through to the newest comment and then I'll do the random from the oldest comment I've I've written out up to up to a couple of minutes before I start my video is where I is where I take it to and then anyone who comments after that will go into the draw for the next one so hopefully I'm not missing anybody out um, so it's turning out to be quite a quite a funny old week been quite tired there's the seventh seventh digit all right seventh on the back so the the charts for the charts for Kingdom of Books and Peaceful Street are full colour, it's glossy. Let me see, let me see. Here, let me fold up Peaceful Street. They're really nice. They're really nice charts. They are. Let 
very clear, very nice charts. Nice big, nice big squares that can be easily seen, but there, it's shiny paper. It's really, it's good quality paper. I still manage to rip a hole in it because I'm pretty hopeless actually. So I was at a bit of a loss because all the back stitch is marked on the pattern. It's good and it's very clear. I've seen much worse back stitch marked out actually. This is very, very clear and the colours are the colour the colours for the back stitch are colour coded. So even though the back stitch colours are green and three shades of blue and three shades of beige, they're bright red, bright yellow, bright green on the pattern. So they really sorry, I keep flashing the pattern at you. I don't think you can stitch very much from it. Um, so I didn't I didn't want to colour it in with anything and I the highlighter wouldn't have worked because of the glossy paper. It's really vibrant colour. So I'm using a fine line Sharpie and I'm just drawing a diagonal line across the stitches as I stitch them, which seems to be working. But you can see really clearly I've got a little girl waving at me. Are you going to come and say hello? No. Are you chicken? Yes. She's chicken. I'll get her one day. She's the little one that was in the blackberry picking video. My Flora. Go on, scoot. <coughs> She's nuts. I haven't quite shut my door. I was rather hoping Eric was around, but he's uh, he's in a bit of a funny mood, is Eric? Yeah, he's getting a he's he's getting a grown up cat now. Not the tiny kitten in my first floss tube, he was. Little tiny kitten. I had looked back at it the other day and he was just me holding this little tiny kitten. Really cute. Anyway, I am literally blathering. So I've got a hankering for a long dog, so it'll be Anzac I think I pick up again. But then I could do some castles in the air. I've got so much to do. I've got so much to do. Um... I think that's me for tonight. I'm going to do a little bit of Kingdom of Books now and I might do a bit of Anzac later on. So I'll have something, something to show you, some little bit of progress to show you tomorrow. And for now today, I don't think there's anything else to add. Nope. And I'll let you know tomorrow if I want anything at auction. And well, if I did, it was quite a strange lot, quite strange lots. I think the person was a bag maker. There is an old 1960s suitcase full of paper patterns like cut from brown paper now they're definitely for something but I don't know what and I couldn't exactly get them out and look at them so I put a really I mean really low bid like literally I think seven or eight pounds on the lot so I probably won't get it but if I do we'll find out what the heck those patterns are because I think judging by the stuff in the other boxes that clearly came from the same person I think they made bags there's buckles like strap, like a buckle on the side of, this, of a thin strap. There's an awful lot of binding and an awful lot of like strengthening felt. They looked useful. The stuff looked useful. So I put a few bids on and I bid on some tools for Robin. So we'll see what we win anyway, if anything. But I'll find out tomorrow anyway, so I'll be able to tell you if we do get anything and then I go pick it up on Wednesday. But maybe not. There wasn't there wasn't anything cross stitch related at all. Sometimes there is and sometimes there's not. Sometimes there's yarn, sometimes there's not. So just depends. Right, because that's all I'm really interested in. There was actually a really nice like Ottoman, a blanket box. I could really use one to put the lump to put the clean bedding in, but I'm not quite I'm not quite flush enough this at this point in time to be bidding on a big piece of furniture. Because <clears throat> I don't want a brand new one, I want a really old one, so there was a really nice one, but I was like, walk past that. It's almost Christmas and a big blanket box isn't what, isn't what I'm getting myself for Christmas. I'm getting myself a, a large kit up. So anyway, I don't think I've got anything to tag on the end of this today. I don't think I've taken any little clips since yesterday. So this is just me blathering. So I shall say goodbye for now and I'll see you tomorrow. And thank you everybody who comments and watches. I really appreciate it. Oh, my big girl Maddie is up for law she wants to do law and she has applied to corpus christi at cambridge to do law she's already had an offer from lincoln from lancaster from york and she has to sit a 
are like an entrance exam for Durham, which is also a really, really good university. Um, and then hopefully they'll offer her, but she obviously top choice will be Cambridge, but she's, she's made it through two sets of, she's made it through the initial application. She's made it through two sets of questions. Like they send you for more information about you and she's sat an exam for them already, which hopefully went well. She hasn't heard anything otherwise. So they don't take very many people a year. She picked one of the really small colleges. So we shall see. We shall see. She's a very clever girl. She's predicted top grades, um, really top grades. So we shall see. And if not, then she'll go to one of the other universities. But she, you know, first choice is first choice, isn't it? But in, in, in the UK, Oxford or Cambridge are top of almost everyone's list because they're the most prestigious, world-renowned universities. God, it's tough being seven, nearly 18, isn't it? <laughs> She's nearly 18. She'll be 18 in five weeks. I'll have an adult child. <laughs> Righto. Not that I'm feeling my age. Righto, guys, I shall see you tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.